<laughs> what is up you guys and of course welcome to an episode of who was really better where this week we're going to cover two of the mega pokemons that got a dragon typing involved with them actually changing their typing and their fundamentals completely mega avros versus mega septile now i for one has been a really really big fan of both of these and i know that avros while not necessarily being the most viable pokemon has its place in the meta as being a really really slow wall breaker septile is on the opposite side a lot faster but not as strong but has of course the issue of being well not as well around as megaphros and well let's just face it as it is they're working differently yet they do the same thing they have a really really hard hitting special attack and it's up to me to of course always go over the overarching move pool and theme to find out which one of these two really are better and we're going to start with that rose because it was introduced first in X and Y. Now, Mega Camerot itself is a very, very interesting being because the electric dragon typing is a fairly rare one. I do believe only Sekrom to kind of represent what that really means. Uh, so, first and foremost, going to go over its resistances and it strongly resists electric, clearly. Uh, fire, flying, grass, and steel and water are also, of course, among these. And of course, electric type is all acting up with flying stab, which isn't necessarily all that bad. Though, the weaknesses are plentiful here. Usually, electric type are only weak to ground, but now you gotta cover the lives for dragon, fairy, and ice. So, it's a double edged sword, though I would definitely say that it works for the better because of the amount of resistance it does gain. Because, let's face it, electric type really doesn't have any useful uh, ways of actually uh, resist things. So, dragon type does help out there, but it, like I said, double edged sword, if anything. Stat wise, uh, Avros is one of those Pokemon that has a really, really large HP stat of 90, and that of course isn't changing. What we do get a boost in is in its attack of 95 instead, defense of 105, which is really big, though it's not as big as a special attack of 165. That's 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 help. That's that's a lot of damage. That's a lot of natural high damage that really, really does carve the niche for Avros of being just one of those bolt spammers. Special Defense of 1010, yeah, it's, this is definitely a bulkier Pokemon, it isn't necessarily that easy to KO. Though, isn't it, it's the worst part is, of course, a speed of 55. Uh, it really, really is way, way below your average wall breaker. But it does mean that it will work great in an environment with Trick Room, and it also works well as a Rest Talker due to that mixed bulk, which just really are up there as one of the fattest mons around, actually. And it's a bulky selector type for anything. But, as I said there, it does have things to hold it back, and the speed tier is one of those things that could work against it. Its ability, Mold Breaker, is, um, well, it's quite good actually. For this Pokemon, it's really good. Uh, the only thing that really, really helps out with there is Pokemon with uh, a Motor Drive or Lightning Rod. This means basically that these Pokemon cannot um, parry um, Thunderbolts or Volt Switching, as Mising Ground types is the only way to block a Volt Switch from Mega Ampharos. And, well, yeah, the ability works really well for it. While I would have liked to see something even bigger for it, I definitely won't say it's a bad ability. It does help it out quite a lot, and it means that the switches for it are, well, not as plenty as you usually are for an electric type, which makes Avros one of the greatest mega Pokemon for the electric types in this game. But as you guys know, Pokemon is only as good as a move pool allows it to be, so how good are Avros move pool? Before really going into Mega Ampharos move pool, one really has to consider that 95 in attack will mean that it does have some niche in actually using physical moves. While it isn't its main attack weight, it's worth mentioning that you have that option. So first and foremost, the moves it learns naturally are the likes of Magnetic Flux, which could work really well if you're in a plus or minus ability before Mega Evolving, because it works like Cosmic Power and boosts both of your defenses by one. Then also learn it's only Dragon Stab in Dragon Pulse. We don't get Draco Meteor, which is unfortunate, but at the same time, it does work for a fair filler. Other than that, we have the usual stuff with your Thunderbolts, Thunder, and we also have in setup moves, we have Cannon Spool and Cannon Guard, which is definitely the one that's probably gonna use. Uh, and then we have Fire Punch, which definitely are decent for the likes of um, Ferroform, which could or are walling this Pokemon quite effortlessly. So having the option for Fire Punch is, is well, quite good, actually. Other than that, we have Power Gem and Signal Beam. Both of these move being, of course, something he learns naturally. Signal Beam is great for Grass-type, that could be Parry it. And Power Gem is 
well, decent filler. I wouldn't necessarily use it, but it is there. On the TM side, we have a few things that stand out. The Brick Break, Focus Blast, uh, Thunder Wave, and... Um, as I mentioned before, the Rest and Sleep Talk, which is fairly decent. Definitely works in its favor. Uh, on the other side, they really aren't that impressive. Uh, we have Charge, which will always be an, a viable option to boost your electric type move. Electric Train, we have Agility, Iron Tail, Flatter, and Body Slam. On the tutor side, though, we really, same thing here. There aren't necessarily all the good moves here. I think it all learns the more viable ones that are important for it. But we have one this here, and that's the Heal Bell, that makes it for a more defensive role. We also have a Magnet or Electro Web and Magnet Rise. Bolt, which could be viable. Magnet Rise, more of a force switch instead, in case you've seen like round time coming in, and may look Magnet Rise that could always be good. But yeah, overall, really, really aren't that many good moves on Mavros on the other side besides when it learns itself. The combination of um, Dragon Balls and Discharge or Thunderbolt are more than well enough to handle or deal with the most threats. The thing that deal well with that combination is, of course, the Steel type and Ground types. They can always be paired with the lines of Hidden Power Eyes uh, or Fire and or use Fire Punch, but most, more likely than not, the, the most common set here with Avros is Dragon Balls together with the Vault Switch, Rest and Sleep Talk. That set is always the more viable option, no matter how we're gonna twist and turn things. But it's really worth mentioning that Avros has a way of parry itself very well against like different matchups. So, you know, League Concept is a Pokemon that can be um, individually picked on how to be worked against. In the meta, it's very, very one dimensional. Like I said, much more flexible in League, and it does have a lot of moves to work in its favor, which makes Mavros one of the greatest Pokemon actually introduced. I really like Mavros, I think his viability is definitely up there. It doesn't show in the Smogon meta, but as an individual Pokemon with that high mix ball, together with a really, really outrageous special attack, there really aren't that many switches. With a move pool that just complements that, yeah, that makes Mega Mavros one of the greatest Pokemon introduced so far. But is it whether or not is Urator Mega Sceptile? And well, let's talk about him and let's find out. So, Mega Sceptile is actually a very, very different being. As I said before, if Ambrose is a bulkier variant of what a dragon combination can be, Sceptile is a faster one. Uh, it really, really is one of those things. Sceptile don't, doesn't have a natural high bulk, didn't gain that either from uh, its Mega Evolution, but got a lot of other different boosts instead. First of all, it's going to cover the Grass and Dragon type combination. It really, really, really is a tough combination. I still think today that the Grass and Dragon combination is probably one of the worst combinations in the game. It has a lot to do with that Grass types simply are sweet to so many things. And they do share resistances. Both the Dragon and Grass share the same type of resistances, which means that the stronger resist a lot of things. Electric, Grass and Water will never do any damage on Sceptile. You still resist Ground, which is fair. But you also have the same type of weaknesses in Ice, which means you're very weak to that. Um, grass type of force keeps its, its issues against Bug, Poison, Flying, and um, Dragon type still keeps their issue against Dragon and Fairy. Um, so, so that's very tough. What do you do to lose one weakness from uh, Grass, which is going to be Fire? It really isn't helping a lot. There are a lot of things that I would say this type of combination just aren't solving. And it's really easy to pinpoint and deal with uh, this combination very, very, really greatly. And that's why the lone executor isn't working all that well, though it is a very, very, very decent Pokemon in all the said and done, but it just aren't doing well because it's not speedy enough to parry Pokemon that cannot speed it and want to kill it. So with that said, how does Septile hold out with that? Well, Septile don't have the issue of being potentially hit on the first place. Uh, first of all, it's HP, yeah, 70, not bulky. 110 in its attack, which is very good. Uh, 75 in its defense, yeah, it's not going to do a lot. Special event, 85, yeah, still, mm, not there. Special attack, however, 145, while not as great as Mega Amphros, it still is a whole lot. And definitely for Grass type, that's, that's up there as one of the greatest. And the speeds are 155, I mean, come on, that's... There really aren't that many things I'm speeding this, which work in this Pokemon's favor, if anything, because it does mean that at least you have an honest chance of hit something before going down yourself, or if you're very lucky, able to clean up late game because you've dented the team so well already. 
What does work really well with Sceptile, of course, Lysa Spike support Stealth Rock to just ship down first before they go down because Sceptile, while 145 is a lot, it's not the denting power as Mega Avros, for example, has. So, yeah, and uh, gets you covers the ability of Lightning Rod, and I think it's unfortunate it gets that. Well, Lightning Rod is great because it does mean it has a one way boost special attack. You strongly resist Lightning, which means that its ability that, yeah, you get an immunity, but it isn't a necessarily a really good immunity. Though, you know, soaking the likes of Thunder Wave could always be good, but yeah, mm, I'm not there. I definitely think there were better abilities for this type of Pokemon, and I really think it missed out on that. That said though, for what has worked, it still is a good combination. It does mean that teammates that can lure such a gear that was a man tiny and can lure electric move makes Sceptile a very, very great ally, if anything. But as you guys know, always cover, we have to talk about the move pool and we need to see what Sceptile do that the Ambrose may not do. Which actually is quite a lot. Now there is a trend actually with this offensive Pokemon over a defensive one. Defensive Pokemon tend to have a lot of supportive aspect and a lot of supportive move. Offensive Pokemon tend to have a lot of more varied moves in its offensive pool. Well, Sceptile definitely represents just that. Uh, it has a, a really, really broad move pool, which makes it a lot more interesting to talk about. It's just how that works in practice, which is all the more relevant. Uh, so first and foremost, Mega Sceptile uh, has one nuke. Um, really just gonna enforce that, because we miss Draco and Mega Ampharos. We have Leaf Storm on... Um, Mega Sceptile, which is, well, let's face it, it's a nuke. It does mean it will hurt at least hard once. And that's going to be very, very decisive to some aspect, because it does mean that while it's special attack, it'll lack lustering. Yeah, 145 will lack lustering. Heard that one before, huh? But what I mean is that at least they have some power to power through some of the bulkier threats. And, and it, it's viable in that aspect. Other than that, when it comes to its natural moves, it really isn't that impressive a level up wise. We have Leaf Blade, which is one of its synergy moves from the get-go. Exisle, we have Pursuit, which is always a great thing to have. Uh, to go to a quick attack, which you will never use to get with Night Slash. On the TM side, however, well, a few things that stands out there. The one that really shows me are Earthquake. Heatran is one of those Pokemon that are parrying this Pokemon completely and have an aspect to have Earthquake is always going to be a good thing. We also have Brick Break, Rock Tomb, Air Lace, a low sweep, focus blast, energy ball. If you don't want to use that over leaf storm, though, trust me, you want to use something else. Sword stance, which makes this Pokemon a possible setup sweeper, the likes of Grass Knot, Nature Power, which does make you work in terrain such as Mrs. Rain or you know, Electric Rain and get Nature Power to do something else. That's always going to be a great thing to have. Uh, on the TM side, or, or Egg side, I mean, we have Crunch, we have Endeavor, Lead Seed, Krego Breath, uh, Worry Seed. Grass Whistle Synthesis, um, Leaf Storm again for some reason, Bullet Seed and actually Grass Terrain on your own. We also have Mew Tutors in Frenzy Bland, which is not necessarily that interesting when you have Leaf Storm, I'm just gonna go right out and say it. Um, though Leech Seed is actually one of the interesting aspects because Leech Seed you get with Substitute and Protect can make Sceptile an enormous annoyance to deal with. Because it's speed enough to parry things, and of course we protect, it just, it's annoying. It's very annoying. And since it's substitute and shows that you have speed, anything you least see could potentially stall out an opponent, when that's, well, that's never pretty to look at, if I'm being honest. On the Mutator side, there really aren't that many things here that stands out. The first one I'm really just going to mention directly are Dragon Pulse. Much like Megaphros, you don't have Draco on this Pokemon either. That means Dragon Pulse is your only way of special spamming your stab, and that's unfortunate, to be honest. Um, other than that, we have Low Kick, which is great. Thunder Punch, which... Ah, nothing necessarily that interesting. Giga Drain, which usually are preferred over Energy Ball. While slightly weaker, you still have a Recovery. Recovery is very nice, and well... <laughs> You don't want to deviate from that. We also have Drain Punch and Focus Punch. Focus Punch is, for me is the one that stands out. Uh, it means that you could potentially, if you're going up against a team with a Blissey or Chansey, uh, call that switch out and give them a nice punch to the face with straight focus. But but yeah, that's really a very, very good combination. On the transfer side, it really aren't that many things that stand out. I guess we managed the lines off a of Mud Slap, which is not viable. But Paras Punch is here, which is actually kind of cool. 
and we have also a counter which could be usable for this type of model because its defensive aren't that good but at least when it mega evolves you get a slight boost and counter could be a very very viable option if you have the matchup to pull that off but overall uh, the smoker meta does allow septile to work really well while it isn't a ou pokemon it still is a pokemon due to its speeds here a special attack alone and the combination gets able to hold its own in uu it can be worked actually in ou but with a very very limited matchup and you know, as always you know do you really want to have this pokemon as your mega slot when there are extremely good mega pokemons like mega like a sam or medisham here yeah septile is seems to be the lesser of the greater good, and of course with the light of Tangro being well completely wall this Pokemon straight up, yeah, you're not gonna use this Pokemon at all. That said though, Mega Sceptal is a very, very interesting Pokemon and a very strong one at that. It just is really shy of being, you know, with the Pokemon that could potentially sweep. It lacks the proper setup and it lacks the the use of proper combination of doing just a little bit more. Overall, Mega Sceptal is definitely one of the greatest introduction to the grass types alone and it, it's a very very cool combination to see an offensive grass type that are outspeed in the majority of the meta which makes it one of the like i said greatest grass type ever introduced in pokemon so far so yeah what this dialogue basically boils down to is which pokemon functions best overall and well there are aspects we really really talk about i think the one that stands out for me is that mega Ampharos is a pokemon that almost cuts it it's a Pokemon that lacks the proper ways of functioning really, really well. I think if the Afros learned the likes of Trick Room naturally, it probably would have been one of the greatest Mega Pokemon introduced, and it would have a very, very strong place in the meta because of Volt Switch and Trick Room. Mmm, that's really up there. But it doesn't get that. It just simply aren't. And while the switchings are a few, uh, is always forced to take damage and that's a very, very big aspect to take in mind and I think most people kind of realized this before we even started the video that it's very clear that Sceptile are built better and stronger than Mega Ampharos. While Ampharos is in theory stronger than Sceptile, it's very clear that Ampharos just... it's one-dimensional, it's slow, and it needs a team to be as slow to function right. When you have the rest sleep talk as the most viable option, and Sceptile has a plethora of viable options, it only speaks for the matchup itself, and that makes Sceptile overall more interesting and better than Mega Ampharos. So yeah, this really wasn't a hard matchup to really talk about. I really want to celebrate how incredibly interesting Mega Ampharos was, but in the end of the day, it just isn't holding up, and it's so unfortunate. Sceptile has issues, and those issues will be staying because the way the Pokemon itself is forced to be functioning, but it isn't a bad Pokemon per se. It's a very viable one. It just cuts short of a few things that could have been done better, but overall I think Sceptile just are the better Pokemon. And I don't think there are that many things to do with Mega Sceptile to make it even greater. If I had to put one thing I would say makes its ability more functioning to what it is want to do, but I think the type combination that it learned the right move to pull that off better. Uh, so with that said, I really want to thank you guys for watching. Sorry that for this episode being one day late. Hope you guys can respect that. And join us next week where we're going to look upon these guys.